everybody it's pandy and i'm playing world of tanks today i'm going to be doing the Ferdinand tank destroyer oh yeah as you guys might have already known i've spoke about this tank during my porsche tiger video simply because it was an ad hoc design using the 100 chassis produced for the failed tiger tank porsche tiger had pretty much its own shortfalls in regards to everything the forward mounted turret and its transmission had issues along with the engine and suspension and everything related to the development of the Porsche Tiger. Therefore, the Henschel design Tiger tank became the all feared Tiger tank that we know of. Many of these chassis already had the engine placed in the middle of the hull to accommodate the turret. This basically gave room for a rear mounted classmate box superstructure. Porsche Tiger frontal armor was only also 100 millimeters worth of armor. So 100 millimeter frontal plates were bolted right on the front to give it an additional armor, a grand total of 200 millimeters worth of it. The main gun chosen for this beast was simply the 88 millimeter Pac-43 L71 main gun. Or whatever. The L71 was developed as a replacement for the famed 88 anti-aircraft gun that was used against allied tanks in the western desert campaign. The L71 had a much longer barrel than the 56 which gave it a higher muzzle velocity with a longer cartridge. These improvements gave the 71 a much better armor penetration than earlier 88mm main guns. It lost the competition to be an anti-aircraft gun but it remained in service as a Pac-43 anti-tank gun which made it successful and on its own right. There was never any official production of the Ferdinand quote unquote during the war. All the existing Porsche Tiger chassis were converted into tank destroyers. The work took place in between the months of March and May of 1943. After the Battle of Kursk, all the surviving Ferdinands were recalled to be modified based on the experiences from the battle. 48 of the 50 surviving vehicles were modified to have ball-mounted MG-34s in its front hall to improve its ability to counter infantry. There was also improved sights added to the commander's hatch, along with the application of anti-metallic main paste that was thrown right onto it. Other minor changes took place to its armor to improve its overall protection and these vehicles were unofficially called Elephant and later officially by Hitler by order on May 1st, 1944. The Ferdinand's first combat action, as I said earlier, was the Battle of Kursk. 89 were thrown into the meat grinder to some effect. It managed to take out T-34s from 3 miles away with its very long gun, but it performed poorly against infantry. Most combat losses were not due to enemy fire, however. It was mainly due to mines and mechanical failure. Within 4 days of fighting, nearly half of all the vehicles or Ferdinand's were knocked out of service due to technical problems and mine damage to the suspension and tracks. Almost all Soviet anti-tank weapons were unable to destroy these vehicles at any range. Most of the vehicles were destroyed or captured due to its crew abandoning them. Although the elephant modifications improved the Ferdinand in the long haul, it still had its problems. In 1944, they served on the Italian front and were rendered ineffective due to their weight of 70 tons. Most roads and bridges simply weren't able to support this bad boy beast thing. There was also problems related to having a lack of spare parts for this since this was not a production vehicle so when the machine broke down they simply had to run off away from it abandoning it and also exploding it. The Ferdinand also saw limited action on the eastern front after its known upgrades to an elephant and also there has been known operational use of a single Ferdinand during the Battle of Berlin. Nothing is known about the combat action of this Ferdinand or elephant during this last battle. Only evidence to suggest that it was used during the battle was its burnout corpse within the last couple hundred square miles of the Third Reich. Only two had survived the war. Soviet forces captured one at Kursk and the American forces captured one at Enzio. In World of Tanks, the Ferdinand does not suffer from any of these drawbacks of faulty parts or technical breakdowns. It works as intended. The firepower on this beast is the Pac-44 128mm main gun or 12.8cm. The 12.8cm is a rather decent change to things if you normally look at tank destroyers. It's usually reserved for the Moss, Baby Moss E75 and basically has a 13 second reload rate on those tanks. The Ferdinand at least you get a 10 second reload rate on the same gun. This is a decent rate of fire and you're able to fire faster than the BL-10, pretty much at a 3 to 2 ratio within 30 seconds. The overall alpha on both guns are within 30 seconds are basically the same, making them basically balanced. But the 12.8 centimeter is overall better for sniping at long ranges, where the BL-10 is more for closer, up close and personal engagements. The 12.8 centimeter 
main gun has the ability to target more targets, including the Moss Super Heavy. It also gives the Ferdinand the ability to target basically scouts because of its faster reload rate. It cannot be underestimated when facing head to head because of that thick armor and the big gun. I do appreciate the main gun just purely because it does lay down the smackdown when the smackdown is needing. It can bitch slap anyone and can pretty much ruin an IS-3 any day. The only thing I actually dislike about the gun, again, is the reload rate's a little slow, but I've been playing tier 9s and 10s for a little while and I got used to the 13 second. 10 second reload rate so anything below 13 second is very very welcome 10 second is a very very nice the armor on this thing is something not to be really talked about or be all at because it's not actually sloped it has a very very flat panel type frontal armor which allows other people to be able to penetrate it with some kind of ease the thickness of it does help you in the long haul and while most of tier 8 guns are capable of penetrating your front glacius without any issues tier 7 guns tend to have problems at medium and long ranges this does give you sufficient protection when facing off against lower tier tanks, but when you're going up against equals like a tier 8 or tier 9, you're gonna get smacked. The machine does fare pretty decently in a haul down type position to protect yourself from direct fire, but artillery is always a growing concern and it applies to any tank to be honest. When it comes to overcoming this tank destroyer as being on the other side of the map, simply getting around to its sides at long range is ideal because its fast reload makes it difficult to get around up on it close and personal. But anything is possible as long as you set your mind to it and as long as your vehicle is fast enough to get around without getting shot but if you're able to get to its sides aim for the middle of the chassis to get its engine and also the mid area of the superstructure will help you find its ammo rack with ease if you have to fight it from the front without any reservations, the driver viewing optics are always an option when you're really up on it if you're just pretty much face to face. Face hugging is what we like to call it. There's always the option for the hatch for the loader, but that only really depends on whether or not you have elevation on the Ferdinand. Part of the chassis where it angles at a 45 degree angle before it becomes uniformed with the whole side armor is also good spots to hit as long as you are at a decent angle of attack, ideally about 90 to 80 degrees. The glasses is always a good spot to hit all around and especially it has the weaker frontal armor so you'd be able to pin through it as long as you have the gun that has more than 200 millimeters worth of pin all in all it's not really a difficult tank to counter it just can ruin your day if you let it it's one of those tanks it can do very very well as long as it's applied correctly but it can ruin anyone's day as long as they know how to drive it and you don't know how to counter it now the mobility on this is decent at best overall it's a well balanced with a big engine as long as you don't go uphill it does keep up well with other heavy tanks on the attack and allows you to reposition on a need to need basis especially if you have to go back to base it is below average in regards to turning your frontal to many enemies so you need to plan out your moves about two to three maybe even five steps ahead before you go moving forward ideally like any other heavy tank and or tank destroyers it with limited mobility if you ever find yourself in a position where you are facing off against a medium tank during that circle of death around you find yourself a hill where you can force the enemy to slow down going up it when he's making those circles around you or find a building to block a possible route around you and force them to take a long route around you giving it enough time to bury your gun on them. This will give you basically a fighting chance against medium tanks when they want to brawl and also forces them to be more creative because you're going to be prepared for them. Overall I really do like the Ferdinand. It does have its drawbacks in regards to mobility and its armor. The armor is not being sloped going from the Yag Panther to this beast. Puts you into perspective where slope armor is now very very important. The AP normal organizations doesn't seem like it helped the Ferdinand a great deal it did help a little bit but not by much it's the whole thing about sloped armor slope armor is the game changer and game winner in regards to simply playing tanks without it a lot of rounds will get through and you won't have those lucky bounces because all, all your armor is simply flat the gun is something to be appreciated of and it does do a very fair job of taking down any enemies you can target tier eights and nines with ease as long as you're aiming for the side armor and it does hurt them in the long haul it does hurt them in the sense that they will take notice of you and start firing at you just purely because you are a threat Round around the Ferdinand is highly recommended to anyone as long as you get the 12.8 centimeter main gun. Don't skip it or you'll regret it. I love this thing and if you guys get a chance to play it, play it man. It's fucking fun as hell. 
Now I get to that part of the video where I get to give some World of Tanks gold away. As usual, I'll be giving away 3,000 gold to the North American server and 2,500 gold to the European Union server. To win said gold, you must be A, B, subscribed to my channel and B, post a comment down below, maybe about the question video, which is, when picking a tank destroyer, what overall traits would you much rather have? Armor? firepower or mobility. When it comes to the differences between the N tier tank destroyers, there is a polar difference. The T95 obviously has the monster armor that is slow as shit with the monster gun. Draw Object 704 has monster mobility and monster gun, where the Yag Tiger simply has the very accurate gun with pretty much the all round balance between the two, armor and mobility. I don't know which one I would pick, honestly. The 704 is kind of pretty decent. I really do like the 704 purely because it does pack a punch, haul ass, and decent armor. I mean, the armor is never perfect on that thing because it's only 120 sloped, but it does the job fairly, fairly well. Only trouble I usually run into is when I'm running into like IS-3s with the BL-9 or IS-4s with the 130 millimeter. But overall, I really do like the Object 704, but I can't really say that I appreciate all of them because I haven't played the Yag Tiger yet. So I still have to check that one out. So around from that, I am all done here. I'm going to be working on the French guide video. I don't know if you guys know about the contest yet, but I plan on working on that on the near future. So I don't know if I'll have another video next week uh, for another tank, but you guys might actually find that when I post my next video, it's going to be the French guide. So hopefully I'll get that done as quickly as possible so you guys can check it out. Let me know what you guys think. So you guys take it easy. I am Pandy and good hunting. Fucking A.